this is the mathematics of natural broadening from a classical perspective. Um, I have followed a book called The Principles of Lasers Materials Processing by Elijah Kanate Asibu Jr. very closely. Before I start, I just wanted to say the reason why I thought to do this was because in a lot of lecture notes and books, they don't really go through the maths thoroughly and I thought it might be a good time for me to actually explain those steps where many may struggle. Um, I'm sure a lot of you may find trivial, but for those of you that don't, I'm sure this is hopefully this will be a good video. Um, I've taken the opportunity to just to write out a few notes, um, which I think is relevant for natural broadening, and hopefully it will help you get a better idea of what it actually is. Um, the first bullet point states that light emission extends over a range of frequencies delta nu, also known as the line width. What that actually means is that in an ideal case, for example, in lasers, you would expect that all the frequencies emitted is at one frequency. However, in reality, the frequencies that are emitted do have a different range or finite range. This is due to broadening effects such as natural collisions, Doppler effects, etc. Now, the third bullet point was, is known as the probability density function. It is the probability that a photon with a frequency between omega and omega plus delta omega will induce, will induce a transition. It is the line, It does have a line shape function known as the Lorentzian or the Gaussian function. Natural broadening. It is associated with the finite lifetime of the excited state due to spontaneous emission. This could be really well explained using quantum mechanics, but I am not going to do that. It's going to be a classical approach. Um, tau represents the lifetime of a spontaneous emission, and d a delta nu is the frequency range of which the photons have been released. So, of the photons, sorry. So, for example, according to the equation, if the lifetime of the emission was really, really large, you can see that delta nu will tend towards zero. And in reverse, if the lifetime was really, really small, then delta nu, the broadening, will be really big. I'm going to move on to the classical approach now. In a classical approach, you have to assume that the emission process can be viewed as an electron oscillator. So again, I have my electron um, energy diagrams, E1 lower, E2 higher, and electron on top for, uh, for, for at E2 at the moment, releases a photo and goes back down to E1. So over time, this is going to happen again and again. As the, um, What we got to realize, understand is that as the electron oscillates, it will lose energy. As a result of this, I can draw a graph representing the electron oscillation, for example, being dampened. Um, on the x-axis, I have time, and on the y-axis, I have the position of the electron as it oscillates. And as you can see, eventually it does tend to dampen, and this graph can be governed by an equation of motion, um, with a, which is a second order differential equation, similar to the ones that you've seen in oscillations before. Um, X represents the displacement of electron from equilibrium. Lambda naught represent, I'm sorry, gamma naught represents a dampening coefficient. Ks represents the spring constant. Uh, solving this differential equation is quite straightforward. Uh, you do have to find the roots, and if you do, when you when you do find roots, using tau is equal to one over gamma naught and omega naught is equal to root Ks, where omega naught is the natural frequency, you could come to a solution where x of t is equal to e to the minus t over 2 tau in bracket a e to the i omega naught t plus b e to the minus i omega naught t. This represents the electric field associated with the oscillator. The reason why I showed you this is because when I go forward with the Fourier transform to try and find the amplitude spectrum, for example, um, I don't have to take the whole solution. Depending on initial conditions, and because these two are arbitrary, I can just take one half, whichever uh, constant solution I would like. So I'm going to start off with our solution that we got earlier, where it's xt is equal to ae to the minus t over 2 tau e to the i omega t. Um, before I do anything, I'm just going to change, just to make it a bit tidy, I'm just going to put 1 
over 2 tau is equal to alpha and then substitute it in. Uh, so that then gives me a x of t is equal to a e to the minus alpha t e to the i omega naught t. Nice and simple. I am now going to take the Fourier transform of that. Uh, the reason why I'll do that is because I can then get the amplitude spectrum. So with the Fourier transform, I will get x of omega is then equal to, I'll be doing it from infinity to zero. And that is because, uh, if you remember from the uh, previous graph, um, we didn't have before zero, there was no displacement. So anything between zero and minus infinity doesn't really matter. In that respect, um, I have a e to the minus alpha t e to the i omega naught t, and the Fourier transform coming in will then be e to the minus i omega naught omega t dt. Oh, and there's also a one over two pi, just for it's just like a transformation, just to make sure that um, when you're transforming from t to omega, for example, is a unit unitary transformation. Right, so tidying that up, I then get, I can take the a over 2 pi on the outside, integrating it, and I'm just going to add all the indices together just to make it nice and simple. So factorize it out, alpha plus i in bracket omega minus omega naught dt. Okay, so now I'm going to integrate that. So... As a result, I have a over 2 pi on the outside. Let's integrate that, then let's bring the exponential down. So on top, I have a minus e to the minus t over alpha plus i omega minus omega naught. And at the bottom, I have alpha plus i omega minus omega naught. And that is going from infinity to zero. Now you must know from maths, uh, previous maths, I don't know, modules or whatever you've done, that e to the minus infinity tends towards zero, and e to the zero is equal to one. So when I substitute these limits in to the integral, I'm uh, sorry, when I evaluate this, I should get, for example, a over two pi, and it will be, so the first one was zero, so I have zero, minus, now in bracket I'm going to evaluate the solution again and I'll have minus 1 over alpha plus i omega minus omega naught. So as a result the whole thing becomes a over 2 pi and then in bracket you can write for example 1 over alpha plus i omega minus omega naught. Okay. And that is our electric field, for example, in the amplitude spectrum. And we're going to make that a bit tidier. So as before, we had a over 2 pi, uh, 1 over alpha plus i in bracket omega minus omega naught. Um, just going to put the imaginary numbers on top and you'll see after a while it makes it a bit more nicer so for me to do that I'm gonna to have to multiply it by its complex conjugate which is alpha minus i over omega minus omega naught divided by alpha again minus i over uh, omega omega naught so once I multiply all of that I should get a in bracket alpha minus i omega minus omega naught in bracket close bracket at the bottom I should have 2 pi and once I multiply that out I should get alpha squared plus omega minus omega naught don't worry this is still the electric field in the amplitude spectrum now if I want intensity of this intensity distribution of this usually we all know that for example, to get intensity and my electric field being x of omega, it should be x of omega modulus squared is equal to the intensity. So as a result, I'm going to have to modulus squared this whole solution here. And for me to do that, if I have a over 2 pi, 
and alpha minus i, omega minus omega naught, and that's all divided by also alpha squared plus minus omega naught. And I'm going to multiply it now, but it's going to conjugate. Let's go it. So I'll have multiplying by a in bracket alpha plus i omega minus omega naught divided by 2 pi sorry alpha squared plus omega minus omega naught okay everyone happy now i'm gonna multiply that out and i should get a squared on the numerator this is alpha squared plus omega minus omega naught squared close bracket and the denominator i should have 4 pi squared um alpha squared plus oh, there's a square there i think sorry apologies and this should be a square there yep sorry um omega minus omega naught squared squared again now if you notice in a numerator and a denominator i have the same bracket at least once so and cross that out with the square and that leaves me with a solution of a squared over 4 pi squared alpha squared plus omega minus omega naught squared um, which is the intensity but I do want to tidy this up so I have this as my intensity but um, if you remember uh, before I substituted alpha and alpha was alpha is was well equal to 1 over 2 tau so what I'm going to do I'm just going to substitute that back in now and at the same time open up the bracket so then I'll have a squared over 4 pi squared over 4 tau squared remember it's squared alpha alpha squared so alpha squared that side as well uh, plus uh, 4 pi squared omega minus omega naught squared close bracket now i'd still want to tidy that up because i don't want to have a fraction in a denominator so what i'm going to do i'm going to multiply the whole solution by one but it's going to be a bit of a cheeky one so it's going to be tau squared over tau squared i'm going to multiply it by so what that will give me is that i have a squared tau squared on the numerator and the denominator i have tau squared in bracket i'm just going to cancel the fours pi squared over tau squared plus 4 pi squared omega minus omega naught all squared and if you can see that tau squared will get deleted but that tau squared that just leaves the solution to have one tau squared so if I write out again a squared tau squared over pi squared plus 4 pi squared um, tau squared omega minus omega naught squared so then this can then be factorized even further I mean simplified even further so I have a squared tau squared and at the bottom I have pi squared in bracket 1 plus 4 tau squared omega minus omega naught squared now that is my intensity however if I wanted to find A, I'm not going to do it, but I'll show you the method quickly because of time constraint that is. So if I, if you remember, the probability density function was given as uh, d omega d omega is equal to 1 between infinity and minus infinity. I'm going to use that because what I have to do, I have to normalize this function just to find A. So in respect, I'm going to do i of omega integrate infinity minus infinity d omega is then going to be equal to a which is a constant uh, minus omega, integral g of omega d of omega but we already know that that is equal to 1 so once you integrate the intensity with respect from infinity to minus infinity you should get a so now that I've worked out the intensity um, which is here on the right on the left I kind of just have this uh, spectral distribution or the line function which is also a Lorentzian shape curve uh, on the x-axis I have omega and on the y-axis I have the intensity would relate to omega um, so for example if I wanted to find the full width half maximum value 
Uh, so if I just draw a quick line there, for example, with a full width ha half maximum value, for example, at, at what stage do you think I omega will be maximum? Um, so basically, I of omega max will equal, will occur. when omega is equal to omega naught so when that actually ha happens you'll see that i of omega max is equal to tau squared a of sorry a squared that is as well over pi squared and as a result i found a height here so if i wanted to find the mid point because I want to have the full width at half the length I'm gonna to have to divide the maximum intensity by 2 so doing whatever on the left hand side of the equal sign has to be the same rules on the right hand side so that is my height I found now I want to find at what point though does this relate to on the graph more or less so what I'll do uh, I will start equating the maximum value over 2, which is my height, to the actual just intensity. So now it's nice and simple, just a bit of algebra. So I have tau squared a squared over 2 pi squared, which is also equal to tau squared a squared over pi squared 1 plus 4 tau squared in bracket omega minus omega naught squared. So already I see similar solution um, letters on either side, so I can cancel that, cancel that, cancel that, cancel that, and the pi squares can go as well. So and once I do the reciprocal, you'll realize that you'll have two is equal to one plus four tau squared omega minus omega naught squared. I'm gonna start rearranging this now. So. I might jump a few steps. So I have 1 over 4 is equal to tau squared omega minus omega naught squared, which then tends towards, we can still simplify it down to 1 over 4 tau squared is equal to omega minus omega naught squared, which then, if I was to take the square root, I'll find delta omega is equal to. 1 over 2 tau or I can write it as 2 delta omega is equal to 1 over tau so I can find uh, which range of the frequencies does natural broadening occur and because it's so small I have realized uh, you can say that once you start doing collision broadening or Doppler broadening that uh, natural broadening is predominated by the other sorts of broadening um, I hope this tutorial has helped you, especially with the mathematics, so now that when you do go through textbooks or lecture notes, you should be comfortable, especially with a classical approach. Uh, thanks a lot.